Oh Whoa, god. we're here, we're here, we're here. Oh my god, Joe and Mike, build assets online.com. What's happening today? We're talking about with the upcoming recession, which people are talking about, is drop is high ticket drop shipping dead? Is this going to impact your stores? Is it impacting our stores? And we also have a very special um sale going on right now, Mike. So maybe we should let people know about that as well. Facts. So we are doing a uh, special, special discount on our Elite Fleet Plus program. And so if you do not know what that is, Elite Fleet Plus is our membership program, but it's also access to our high ticket dropshipping course, our blogging course, and you also get our Kindle publishing course. And so, yeah, we're doing a big sale on that, um, partially because a lot of things are tanking right now. And, you know, we've seen a lot of people who haven't done high ticket drop shipping really suffer and, and lose a lot of money um, because they kind of, they put their, their eggs in the wrong basket. So we really want people to put their eggs in, in the high ticket drop shipping basket, at least a little bit, because it's been, it's been very good to us, Joe, and um, been good to a lot of our students. So indeed, 25% indeed. off. Uh, where do they got to go? Joe, can you make a banner for that? Is there a nice link? We can I got a, I'm making that right now. I forgot to do that. All right. Well, well, Joe, while Joe does that, uh, yeah, that, that's about that. So we got eight people in here right now. So as always, say what's up in the chat. Let the algorithm know that uh, we mean something. So that way uh, more people join and we can start talking about the recession. Not not regarding our hairline. And, uh, you know, well, that's de that's de that's definitely receding. All the economic metrics are in. <laughs> yeah, it's a sacrifice we had to make. But uh, yeah, what's up? What's up, Justin? What's up, Trevor? Matt? What's up, Dropship Daddies? What's up, Jake? Good to have you guys in here. And uh, you know, we'll just give it a couple more minutes. Let it uh let it breathe. Do you think it's the best tune to start? I'm assuming you mean time. I beard by the end of 2022. We will be in a mild recession, and by the end of 2023, end of 2023, all hell will break loose. Well, we're gonna get into that directly. And um the one thing I could say now is, you know. How often are financial models accurate? How often are, you know, predictions accurate down to the year, down to the month, down to the day? So uh, we'll talk about that. I think Joe and I are actually going to have differing opinions here. Uh, I think Joe is a little bit more black pilled than I am about the situation. But well, oh, what, they, about whether it's a good time to start? Uh, just about the economy. Oh, okay. As far as it being a good time to start, I mean, obviously we're going to say yes, but it's true because think about when COVID hit, everyone yeah. thought that was going to be the end of the world. And that actually turned out to be like a huge, huge opportunity for everyone that had made a store already. Like some people's stores, including some of ours, completely exploded, like huge increase in sales. I mean, we, we saw people come in even during COVID. Um you know, start making a store from scratch and, you know, built it up and, and some of you insult some for six figures. So, right. It's, uh, I don't know. What, well, what do you got to say, Joe? Uh, I don't really know what black pilled means, but <laughs> whatever. Black pilled, black pilled means you're, uh, like cynical about the future. Okay. You well, I'm not, I'm not so much cynical. I just think that there's definitely going to be like a long, uh, recession and economic readjustment. But I want to get back to his question. I want to pull up his comment, actually, because he says, I heard by the end uh, of 2022, we'll be in a mild recession. And by the end of 23, all, all hell will break loose. Well, that doesn't make it a bad time to start because what else are you going to do? Exactly. If all hell breaks loose and you have your, you know, your job working for another company, I mean, they're just going to fire you anyway. So, you know, you got to set yourself up in a way where, I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter. Like if all hell breaks loose, all hell breaks loose. And then that's that. 
right? I, the position we're in now is the position I would want to be in if all hell broke loose. So I wouldn't want to be at a job. I mean, I'm, so what other alternative is there? I don't think there's any other business model that you can do that can get you off the ground as quickly and cash flowing and have, again, that asset that you can sell, um, you know, in, in such a short amount of time. What, what else could you do? Joe, you said you went into jujitsu the other day and, you know, we had a, the, the, our teacher, he said he got fired from his job. And so he had to come back and start teaching more classes. Yeah. And so what predicament do you want to be in? You want to be in a situation where you can have control to some degree over your own income. Right. And think about this. You're sitting in your house, I'm sitting in my little office here with the Kramer picture and the poodle picture behind me. And here I have access with my nice mechanical keyboard that my friend made me. I have access to sell stuff to, at least here in the United States, like 340 or 330 million people. That's a lot of people just by using search engines and targeting what they're already searching for. So in terms of economic stability, there's really no other skill that I want to have because what goes out the window when, if the, if, if all hell does break loose, the, um, the impulse buys go out the window and an impulse buy is when you send someone to a web page and you try and convince them to buy something that they aren't already looking for, or they don't really need. But when you're using search engines and you're sending traffic to pages that people are already searching for, it's a whole different ballgame. There's nothing else. There's no other power that I'd rather have. Yeah, exactly. And you say impulse buys goes go out the window. And I think a lot of that has to do with like, you know, you see an Instagram ad for something, you know, like a, a weird massager or whatever. You say, yeah, I'll buy that, you know, 200 bucks. I'm doing well. Maybe, maybe you don't buy that now, but something that you need, if it's like a slop sink or something, you still got to buy that slop sink or, yeah. you know, but I think no matter what is like, if, if someone is searching for it and people will be searching for stuff, if someone is searching for it, they're probably going to buy it, whether it's in their budget yeah. or not, you know, it's the, it's different. They're going to probably stop buying stuff that they see and they're like, Oh no, I can't afford that right now. Sorry, little Timmy, we can't get you a new toy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I am going to order wanna... my garden bed online because we got to start planting. Yeah, exactly. So I want to say, I don't think all hell will break loose for everyone. I think, you know, depending on your income level, if you're in a lower income bracket and you have a job, you know, you're subservient to getting a paycheck from someone else, all hell may break, may break loose for, you know, those types of people, unfortunately, because they have so little control over their own income. But the people at the top, the people that are, you know, already making a high degree of income, whether it is through a job or some other means, I mean, those people rarely lose their quality of life. And so those people even are still going to be shopping around for, you know, yachts and whatever other luxury items that they typically buy. And so, again, I don't know any other business model that allows the average person, the normie, to tap into that and start selling to these people and, you know, make thousands of dollars profit doing that. So again, that's, that's where I would want to be. Absolutely. But, uh, I want to just reiterate what I was saying in the beginning. Uh, now that you got this link ready, Joe, we're doing a special promotion on the elite fleet plus, which includes our membership program It's a done for you service, not done for you done with you service where you get access to our high ticket dropshipping course. You get access to our blogging course, our SEO modules, our niche selection masterclass, and you get access to private one-on-one -on -one chat with Joe and I, so we can make sure your website is set up correctly, your conversion tags are in, your ads are run properly, you get calls with us. And so we're doing 25% off on that for the next two days or so. It's going to expire uh, tomorrow. And so this is probably the best price we've ever given on it. Um, yeah, so buildassetsonline.com slash special offer is where you can take advantage of that. Again, there's no one else that's doing this done with you type service where we work with you one-on-one -on -one 
to make sure that, you know, if you're a beginner, everything is set up correctly. You can get your first sale. You can get your first $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month. Even if you're intermediate, you know, we can get you to $100,000 a month uh, if you're willing to put in the work. And uh, even beyond, I mean, I've had students sell their website for six figures. And, you know, we have a lot of students that are making sales and making profit. And so that's uh, a nice thing to see. But so let's get back into it, Joe. We got Carlos in here. What's up, guys? Toddy, we uh we know we we know what you meant. But yeah, give me two years to stack my money with my business and get assets on sale. Yeah, this is ultimately what you want. And um if you could just make one thing, one website that makes a thousand dollars a month, like we keep saying, you could sell that for thirty thousand dollars potentially. And to the average person, that is a huge win. There's no other way that you're going to make a thousand dollars in one fell swoop like that. And I think, um, you know, the path that we have outlined, it's taken us many, many years to really figure out what's worth putting your time into. And it's a huge thing because we get people that come to us and they say, should I do this? Should I do AliExpress? Should I start a blog? And, you know, the answer is maybe, but it's all about what are you trying to accomplish? What we found is for the majority of people, high ticket dropshipping is, again, the easiest way to get up and running, to get cash flowing, to have an asset you can sell down the line. And then it really just snowballs from there. I mean, our land course, Joe, I was telling people in the um, the land group, we put two properties under contract uh, last week. One where we bought for 35, we're selling it for 75, when we bought for uh, 40,000, we're selling it for 80,000. And, you know, none of that would have been possible without drop shipping because now we have the prowess on how to sell stuff online and we have the, you know, the cash flow and the ability to invest in properties like that and get, you know, get a return. And so it all snowballs from there. Right. And I want to go over actually uh, some of the reasons why, even if, uh, things go to hell in a handbasket, even if your drop shipping store is running at a, let's say a bad, you know, underperforming, there's still many, many reasons why now is still a great time, if not the best time to get started. I mean, you can't get started in the past, so why not now? Um, so reason number one I have here, credit card rewards. Say you operate a drop shipping store for, I don't know, a year and say you break even or you lose money but you've purchased $500,000 in uh, products. You get a, a credit card that's got, you know, 2% cash back. That's $10,000 right there. Or you get some nice travel rewards. You know, $500,000 in products isn't really that much, but I'm just trying to give you an example. Yeah. You know, you multiply that by three, you know, you're looking pretty good, but then maybe you could be profitable the next year. I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I'm just saying that worst case scenario this is a great thing to fall back on. This is the most underrated thing about high ticket drop shipping. And um, we were talking about this in the the membership yesterday. We were just talking about different credit cards and, and stuff like that. And it, you're totally right. Like there's no other business you can run hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars completely through credit cards. And, um, you know, our friend in the chat was talking about all hell breaking loose. I mean, for a lot of travel things, hell has already kind of broken loose. Flights that used to cost $100, $200, now $1,000. And so that's kind of the thing that I see happening more and more. And you can tell me if I'm wrong, because I know you've done a lot more research into this. Me? I but, don't know anything about travel flight. I don't know anything well, about this. Well, I, I foresee expenses and different things that used to be, you know, um, less of an issue, like, you know, going – Flying to Florida again, two hundred two hundred dollar flight maybe two years ago. Now it's a thousand dollars, and you need you you got to sit in a crappy Spirit Airline back seat. Right. You know, traveling. You know, buying a RV. Those th those prices are going to go up. You use car. You know, prices like that have skyrocketed. But going back to the travel idea, the credit card idea, just through high ticket drop shipping, just through our ad spend. You know, using a Chase In card, we get enough travel points to virtually fly anywhere we want, you know, the, free for the whole year. 
because um, you know the cost of the flights has gone up, but the points required, like in the reward programs, hasn't necessarily gone up. And so this is a, uh, a huge, huge benefit. All right. So let's go to the next thing that I have here. Learning essential skills to drive profitable traffic. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I want to talk some a little bit about agencies. Agencies that run Google ads, agencies that run search engine optimization for other businesses. Now, in my opinion, this is not a business model that I would want to do because I wouldn't want to have clients in that regard. Maybe I, maybe I don't, maybe it's, it's just at this point in my life, I'm not going to get into it, but many of these agencies don't actually have never actually done this for their own business. And in my opinion, that is the really the cream of the crop, the skill that you need um, to make money online, driving profitable traffic. If you can do it for your own business, that you're making a fantastic investment, even if the economy crashes, everything's doing terribly, your store, I don't know, goes out. I'm just playing with these worst case scenarios right now. The, the bottom line is you're learning an essential skill to drive profitable traffic. So once you have that skill, that is not only a skill you can use for yourself, but a skill you can use for others. If you do go the agency route, if you do, you know, you can even, you know, just take, just take on a few, a, a couple clients. It's really not that difficult, but high ticket dropshipping is always, in my opinion, the best way to learn these things because you're doing it for yourself. It's pretty easy to be profitable. And yeah, what do you have to say about that? I agree. If everything really does go to shit, you at least have some way to make ends meet because you've developed a unique skill. And so now you can do freelance work and what have you. And this is really a worst case scenario, but you know, Joe, we like to have backups to the backups to the backups because we're, we're very conservative in how we do things. And like I said, we've really spent a lot of time deliberating what business models should we do? We've bought so many courses and we've done so many things that, uh, if we're going to do something, it has to make a lot of sense on many different levels. If we're going to go ahead and spend the money in order to do that. So I think that, do you have something else to say? No, go ahead. No, I think that actually brings um, to the next point. Use that word conservatively is that with high ticket dropshipping, you can operate conservatively. And some people make the mistake of not doing this. We've talked about this on a previous stream. Some people will say, oh, I'm going to just up my bids to this and this. I'm not going to pay attention. And, you know, we've heard some some bad stories about that. But if you're careful, and it's not even being careful. You can operate things conservatively. And, you know, so even if you make just a couple big sales a month, you still have an asset that you can sell. What other business model can you do that with? I don't know. You know, it's always this... You know, even with even with building blog sites, it's hard to operate conservatively. I feel like you have to either be like all in or like all out. I don't know. That's just how I that's how I feel about it. Yeah. And if we go back to our friend Raz, who we've had on the show a couple of years ago, maybe it's time to have him back on because I feel like he started his store many years ago. To tell you the truth, he's never come to us and been like, I'm, I'm flopping. I'm losing money. I need help with sales. And, but the thing is, I don't even know if he like looks at his ad account. Like I don't even know if he pays attention to what's going on, but clearly it's working. Well, but Mike, he, Mike, let me, let me stop you right there for a second. Now I just said that we've had bad stories where people don't pay attention to their ad account with what's going on. What is Raz doing different that make, make that, that draws that line. He's very conservative and that he doesn't try and, you know, say, oh, okay, I'm, I'm doing this much in sales. Let me double it in one month. So people get too greedy. They see these, this stuff works and they think everything just comes easy. And so they just throw the bids up. They think everything is going to be hunky dory. And that's when you run into trouble. Uh, we've done this a little bit as well. Just in, in less um, crazy ways. But I think eventually you, you learn your lesson that when it comes to Google ads, when it comes to driving traffic, the right traffic, you have to take things step by step. There's no reason to just, this is not Facebook ads. This is not some AliExpress thing 
or you have a viral uh, video and then you just, you know, scale it from $10 a day to $1,000 a day. This is, you're building a real business. You want really good traffic. And so you need to make sure that as you're increasing your traffic, you, you're maintaining the same keywords. You're not showing up, you know, for the wrong things. You're not having a bunch of products that weren't spending a lot before now spending all of your budget. And so, yeah, uh, when people get aggressive too quickly, for some reason, it often coincides with them not, you know, really paying close attention to exactly what's happening on a daily basis. Um, but yeah, again, again, the beauty of high ticket dropshipping is that for years, Joe, we had to operate pretty conservatively because we didn't know even how to scale. Right. Like, <laughs> well, there was me... a time. Go ahead. Go ahead. There was a time. I, I, I... There was, was getting, time. getting ahead of myself. There was a time when we had maybe just one store, we were in your old house in your basement and we were like calculating out what the break even cost was for um, like a bunch of products, like uh, mm -hmm. in terms of bids, right? Do mm -hmm. you remember this? Yeah, I mean, I know uh, we had the white, yeah. Well, that's so when we, we came up with the, yeah, that the second store idea, it was all that same time period. Right. And so we were like, oh, okay, we can spend this much. And if we convert it this percent, we'll break even. And so we upped our bids like astronomically. So some of these items we would make like a thousand dollars and stuff. But after a couple of days, it just completely ran off the rails. And we were like, we have to stop this, we have to stop this. And so we were never afraid to scale back and just let things run at a conservative rate that we wouldn't break the bank because we know over time we'll begin to learn more and more data will come in and then we'll really be able to make clear cut decisions. And then we can spend more at that time. And that's kind of what happened. I mean, it took us a couple of years to really, really dial in on ads. It honestly took us until after we sold that first store for me to truly understand um, what was going on inside of ads. Right. And Mike, you talked about scaling. The, the scaling could be very difficult. And if you're first getting started, you don't have to think about scaling. You see, I wrote here on the stream, I wrote skim off the top. Skimming off the top is not a bad idea. And it's what we did for many years. And I think actually skimming off the top um, when it comes to search is uh, a really, really good thing to do when you're getting started. And let, let me give you an example. So you talked about Raz keeping his bids low. The SEO, the SEO equivalent of this is going after long tail keywords, you know, best roller skates for four toes or something <laughs> <laughs> long tail, high ticket. Okay. When you're long tail, high ticket, maybe you only get 10, 20, 30, 50 clicks a month, but one sale can make you a decent chunk of change. And so you're getting a little bit of traffic, but that traffic is really valuable. When it comes to getting a lot of traffic, getting a lot of traffic is honestly one of the hardest things to do. Getting a little traffic is easy. Getting a lot of traffic is hard. So when you start getting going into getting a lot of traffic, that's when you better have a good uh, budget. You better know what you're doing, but there's no need to do that for high ticket mm. drop shipping. You could just skim off the top. You know, you could literally just scale a store to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 profit per month and then sell it. Yeah. And that's not, honestly, that's not a bad thing to do. I mean, if you think about it, I feel like in these, in these, in the past uh, year or so, because we've sold a lot of stores, we're kind of on the search for what we're going to do. That's going to be a big opportunity, but you could just skim off the top flip the store, skim up the top of another industry, flip the store and keep going, keep going, keep going. And right, you're making a case for um, having multiple stores at once or, you know, multiple blog sites at once that are just kind of taken at ease. You go after the lowest hanging fruit and you let that be that. And you move on to another niche or industry where you can just get the lowest hanging fruit and um, you rinse and repeat. And I think maybe a common misconception is people think that we just make stores and then they just immediately go to a hundred thousand in sales and 200,000 in sales. But every store that we've gotten to, you know, the six figure mark, it's taken us a while to do that. It took, it took us time because we're not in a rush to get to some certain, some certain goal with like a, one particular store. We need for, we need the data to come to us. We want to see what the winners are. 
and then slowly we're going to build it out. And uh, yeah, Kareem said uh, avalanche theory. That's right. It starts with what? Just one little uh, snowflake falling and then the rest, the rest uh, start falling from there. But that's really the point is people get too aggressive when they, they don't need to be. And you don't want to ever be operating from a place where you're, you're in dire straits. And so maybe if you do need to get a job to make ends meet uh, in the meantime, while you build your store and get it to that point where you can quit your job, then it is what it is. But yeah, one of the beauties of uh, high ticket dropshipping again, is you can leave your ads running and, you know, just have your articles up and you can get traffic for years on end with barely touching your bids. If they're conservative and you'll continue to make money and uh, probably even grow a little bit. Absolutely. Um, so let's let's I guess let's look at some chats real quick. Um, cool. Yeah. And if you guys have any questions um, about high ticket dropshipping, about you know the recession and how it relates to high ticket dropshipping, blogging, then just uh, give us a little chat here. Yeah, ask us questions about the upcoming recession. <laughs> we'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> Just got a thousand dollar reward bonus from my CC spending on ads <laughs> and products. <laughs> Needed it. Glad your CC is serving you well. Yes. Yeah. And um, I think Joe, we should have mild method back on the podcast again soon because the credit cards, I think they're an, they're an important part of the business and an important part of, of life hacking for a lot of people. Yeah. So get him like back. Traveling. Get him back. He, he, said he's gonna come, he said he's going to come back on soon. He's going to come back on soon. So, all right, cool. Kareem Hassan. Hey guys. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Kareem. That's a La Felicia beauty. Well, we skipped uh, John Francis who said bow S. Is that like prowess? I guess so. <laughs> Who's Felicia beauty? Maybe that's his store. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Yes. Oh, our, our boy Byron and Bow, we trust. Yes. Put that on the, the $1 Bow bill. <laughs> bow bucks. <laughs> uh, you just explained one of my biggest faults, Mike, LOL. It's happened to me twice now where I get cocky, double my bids, and go weeks without sales and lose money, LOL. Conservative always wins. Yeah. Yeah. You know, although we've had students that have said, you know, I went in, I was just really aggressive with my bids and it worked out for them. We've done interviews with a couple of these people, but I think it's kind of, um, it's not, it's not guaranteed to happen. I'm not going to say it never happens and it, it never works out, but um, yeah, it just, it just, you don't want to be in a position where you lose a bunch of money and now you're in, you're in a bad position financially. You always want to be doing high ticket dropshipping in a way that's profitable. You need to be very, very protective of that. If you go, if you go a month, obviously you should be paying attention to what you're spending and what you're making um, kind of throughout the whole way. But if you go a month and you went down in, in profit by a significant amount, you need to take a serious look at that and make some adjustments so that you don't you don't wind up going into the uh, into the red. Um, yeah. Hello, Nix. What is the short answer of this question? The short answer is, high ticket dropshipping is not <laughs> going to die in a recession. There will always be people that need certain items. There's going to be people that need slop sinks. There's going to be people that need tubs to bathe in. And so it's, uh, it's unlikely, you know, all the suppliers that are bringing in goods and selling these goods are just going to go out of business. If that happened, it would just be, it'd be anarchy as we know it. So with that being said, there's always going to be a market to serve. There's always going to be people, be people that are upper class. that are going to want to buy even luxury items, if people aren't buying, you know, necessities, the slop sinks, the tubs, there's going to be people that are still rich. They're still going to want their, uh, I don't know. They're going to want their tennis courts, 
and uh, they're <laughs> tennis nets. And so someone has to sell that to them. And ultimately that's going to be you. And also on top of that, you're also building a skill that you can take and do freelancing to help run people's Google ads for other businesses. If everything really, really, really gets bad. So the short answer is it's not going to die, but now is the best time to start if you have not done so. Where should you go to start? You should take advantage of the uh, special offer we have going on, buildassetsonline.com slash special offer. That's one word. Anyway. <laughs> uh, where are we? I wanted to know if you guys do exclusive SEO courses. It's hard to afford the 5K USD. Well, it's not 5K. If you go to buildassetsonline.com slash special offer, it's not 5K USD. It's actually much cheaper than that. The 5K is for our, our um, upgraded program, but you don't need that. We have a specific SEO course you get uh, with access to our regular courses, and you still get one-on-one -on -one help with us. So it really is a um, it is a done-with-you type program where we help you work on your store or your blog site, your SEO, and uh, do what we can to, to make you succeed. Would you recommend building your business with the idea of selling it in the future? Set up things so that it's easy to transfer accounting, Google advertising apps. Absolutely. I mean, number one, we build all of our businesses now with the idea of selling them in the future. If they're not sellable, then you're not going to have that compounding on your time. Like I talked about before, if you have a website that makes $1,000 a month, you sell that for $30,000, you've now got a huge compound on the time that you put in. So if you had that website, you operate it for 16 months, that's $16,000 profit. You sell it for $30,000. That's $46,000 you had within 16 months. So whatever hours you put in along that time frame, you've now added a huge chunk that will factor into, you know, the total hours you worked in that business. So yeah, if you're not doing things to sell them, then um, ultimately you're probably hurting yourself. But also, yes, the accounting, this was a mistake we made. You really want this to be on point as much as possible. Um, the Google ads, it's always on a separate account, so that's easy. The Shopify apps, that's always on a store-by-store -store basis, so that's easy. It's just keeping track of the accounting and making sure that there's no intermingling between one website and another so that you can provide clean books to the next buyer. And you're, um, you can prove essentially what the store is making easily. Matt said he's working on another store in the background. Sick stuff. Nick said, yes, I have high ticket drops on Shopify. I'm a developer. I'm an advertiser and everything. So I'm new here, but I don't think it's dead already. I think there might earn a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing this, not like we've been doing this for 30 years. We've been doing this since 2015, 2016. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's always scares of this or that, or there's always reasons for people to not get involved in something. It's like with the crypto thing, right? Bitcoin's at 60 K people aren't going to buy it. Cause Oh, it's too expensive. Bitcoin goes down to 20 K. Oh, I'm not going to buy it. It's, it's dead. Mike, you, you bought Bitcoin at a good price, I got to say, I originally. Did. I did. So, yeah, that's, that's why, you know, the best time to uh, to get in is is now. But this is not Bitcoin where this is some speculation. I mean, I still I still ultimately believe in Bitcoin, whatever. But this is this is about investing in yourself and your own skill set. Yeah, because that's it's not like that continually goes up or down you're working at something where you're continually stacking the odds in your own favor. Bitcoin, you have no control over what the price is going to be at any given day, but you do have control over the skills that you learn and the businesses you put effort into each and every day. And so it only, it doesn't take that long. If you put in effort for one year, two years into this, the amount that you can get out is decades and decades of financial, uh, financial tokens compared to having a regular job. So again, one store, you can sell it for 30,000. What happens if you make three stores? What happens if you have a store that makes 
five thousand dollars a month, which is not out of the realm of possibility for someone that you know is uh, is just starting out. And so, what else can you do? And within a couple of years, you have enough proficiency to basically determine what your own income is. How long does it take to become a doctor? How long does it take to go to friggin' college? How long does it take to get a promotion at a job? Yeah, I mean, don't get me started. I was, I've been doing a lot of lot of thinking about college lately, and it's not good. You going back? <laughs> no. I was talking to this this Zoomer who is going. She's going for communications. And I, I guess what <laughs> I'm, I guess my point is that what, what what really baffled me when she told me this was like. When I went to college, and I feel like when maybe when you went to college, it wasn't really known that it kind of sucked. But I feel right. like now everyone should know. Yeah, I'd say about around my age was when it the whole idea of like the loans and how you wind up, you know, $100,000 plus in debt by the time you graduate, now you have to get a job. That wasn't really that popularized as an idea by the time that uh, – yeah, certainly when you were in college and you were saying that that was way out there, you were like a, a crunchy hippie for saying that. But now, yeah, it's obvious. Like, I mean, even, even Biden talks about relieving all the student debt. Obviously it's a huge problem because yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah we, we can, we can have a whole episode on that. It's, it's, it's the worst thing you could ever do. And frankly, if we, if we had a lot of debt coming out of college, there's no way we could, we could have done what we have done now because we would have had to make that you know four hundred eight hundred dollar college payment to pay off our student loans every month and so the, the risks you're able to take are so hindered because the the downside if you can't make that payment one one time is the interest goes up or you, you continually can't make that payment. I mean, what do you do? Do you go bankrupt? Because you can't bankruptcy doesn't even get rid of these loans. So that's why we're a big proponent of having very little personal debt because it allows you to operate things and take um, a little bit more business risks from a less emotional level. Like our cousin, uh, our cousin Jared does trading, right? He does, does trading on the stock market. And so what the point I'm going to make is he says that people can do like, you could do like stock, stock market simulations where it's like, it's not your own money, but the second you put your own money into it, your emotions get into it and your decision-making is all screwed up. Yeah. And so it's the same way, even in regular business to a certain degree, if there's too much emotion riding on one particular decision, then it can hinder your decision-making process. And, uh, you know, if you want to put yourself in a position where you could throw $50,000 at something and if it goes down, it's, I mean, it, it sucks probably, but it's, it's not the end of the world for you. So it's not to say be reckless with your money. It's just to say that the less personal debt you have, the easier it is to take risks and get those high rewards out of business. So anyway, Trevor, I think the course should be double or triple. I agree. And it might, you know, to be honest, it might happen. Screw it. You know, I think, um, I don't know. We could double it or triple it. Yeah. Depending on how this sale goes, this could be the last opportunity to, uh, <laughs> I'm being dead serious. I, I, I don't doubt you. <laughs> Janelle, I don't know how to say your name. I hope Janelle, Janelle. I got my first supplier to first supplier today. You got this emoji. You do got this. It's always fun to see people go through those the initial milestones. Because, yeah. you know, over the years it, it to us it loses its luster. The first milestone, the sale, the chings would be like a an otherworldly moment back <laughs> in the day, you know. Getting a to Ching, getting an order on Shopify. Now it's like Joe sees the to Ching. He does. He throws his phone. He doesn't even want to deal with it. He's got to <laughs> deal with the accounting of it. He's got to deal with taxes. So 
Why use Grasshopper over Zendesk Call when you can centralize everything in one place? Well, I don't know. We've never used Zendesk. So, I mean, Grasshopper is perfectly fine. Um, do you need to centralize everything in one place? Do you just log into different Grasshoppers? It's not, it's not like a huge burden on our business right now, but hey, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a phone service. Like, yeah, we use Grasshopper or, you know, tomato, tomato. Yeah. They all do the same thing. Essentially. I have one of the popular questions. Can I use my EIN number for Shopify payments gateway for a non USA resident? This is the biggest issue for starting my business. Stripe said there was a high risk of dispute. I really don't know. This is not. Um, I'm pretty sure you have to have it. Like it's better to have a USA address as well, because you know your EIN number is one thing, but if you have a different address, then I think that's when the high risk stuff is going to come in. Yeah, and inside the membership, we have more students that actually do this. So, like international people that have worked around. Uh, getting Shopify payments and stuff like that. So it'd probably be best to consult with them because, yeah, we've never dealt with it personally. But we do have people that operate in the U.S. that are not U.S. residents. So there must be a way around that. Transferable skills is the name of the game for job security. The skills you learn from growing your own business is priceless. Facts. And just one thing I want to add. I mean, the opportunities that present themselves from – High ticket dropshipping as well are not to be overlooked because essentially you're building relationships with suppliers and these, these companies are made up of real people. So if things really go to shit in your life and you know, you don't, you don't have the mental capacity to operate a business anymore or what have you, you have good relationships with these people. You have experience in the industry, obviously, maybe they can get you a job. Maybe, you know, there's, there's opportunities there to be had. Maybe there's a upstarting company in an industry that needs someone to run their Google ads for them. You know, there's, there's always um, different things. And so it's kind of an obvious point, but you are essentially networking by osmosis and developing relationships by selling other people's products. Kareem just wanted to say thanks for the info BTW. Zoomer. Trevor, I'm going for computer science, software engineering, still running the business on the side. So really no downsides. It's all about staying busy, zero debt. And so this is one of the, really the, probably the best things you can do if you're going to school or I don't know if you're doing like a boot camp or something, but um, what would you say about this, Joe? I mean, yeah, I got no qualms about it. I don't really understand the difference between, okay, so I, I would like to learn computer science and learn to code, but I probably don't have the time. Um, but I was researching it a little bit. And so from what I understand, I mean, it's not, it's a good thing to definitely have a background in computer science if you're going to learn to code, because they're kind of two separate things. Like computer science is more so the understanding of the code and how it interacts with like memory and stuff like that, which is obviously important, whereas software engineering is like... Uh, the actual act of the coding itself. Right. And I don't know if you could look, I know you could learn to code online pretty easily, but I don't know how easily you can learn like computer science, but I mean, if you're doing it with no debt, whatever, I might be talking out of my, out of my ass. I don't really know. I, I would try right and do it for that. as cheap as possible. Yeah. And that's something like that is always going to be in demand, no matter what happens in a recession, no matter where the economy goes. I don't think we're going back to the stone age. I think we're, we're in this technological age now. And, uh, well, we AJ, might. AJ says computer scientists and nerd shit, a Chad software engineer. There you go. <laughs> That's surprising. <laughs> Sorry, Trevor. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's, that's certainly a good skill, but it also translates because if you have a hot, if you have a dropshipping store, now you can code an app or something. And uh, it's all stacking on top of each other. Software as a service is one of the most, the highest multiple uh, online businesses you can create. And so yeah. we don't do that as much because we don't have. We don't do that at all. Have, we, yeah, at all. 
because we don't have you know we don't have the skills for it i mean we could always hire someone but it's out of our uh depth right now but yeah. uh yeah it's certainly a huge skill stack to have the coding ability and the e-commerce know-how um and combining that i would say if one of us could code then it would open us it would open up a lot of opportunities but that's not the yeah. case yeah we're busy enough you know and it's not something it's not something you necessarily need but again it's just about your particular skill stack y'all watched alex from ozvid where he explains risk in business the execution business versus the grand slam business execution business is known to work but relies on the skills of entrepreneur win um i don't know exactly what you're saying i think what you're trying to say is what we do is execution businesses because they are known to work we're not doing we're not going out on a limb and creating a new product we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here or disrupt anything we're just kind of serving uh the marketplace with what it needs and we have you know the the skill set to do so and uh it's a very learnable skill set a very translatable skill set so is that what we're doing Maybe it is. Nick said, I got supplier. One of the most popular in my niche. I get my first purchase from a Google session, but Stripe is the biggest issue in this case. They don't give me money and I add some funds to refund. I don't know what that means. I'm laughing because he, he says everyone uses their social security number and they have fun. <laughs> well, having a social security number is not that fun. <laughs> The government has imprinted us. We're now their chattel. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. If you're not a supported country, you need third-party gateway, and there's a lot of issues. I've registered LLC in Delaware and get EIN number. Um, I don't know, man. Wait. Well, Joel says, you can use Stripe with an EIN number when you're a non-US resident. This is my current setup. Yeah. So... It seems that it works for some people. I mean, there are times where Shopify payments will like outright not not let you use them. It happens to U.S. residents and non-U.S. residents. So it could be nothing personal in regards to you not having a social security number. It could just be they don't like what you're doing or maybe they asked you for more business, business information and you couldn't provide it. Um, so – we really need to dive deep and see what they said, but there's also, there are third parties. There's authorized.net. There's chase. There is um, companies like heartland. Like there's payment processors out the wazoo. So there must be a way if there's a will, there's a way you have suppliers. You have one of the most popular suppliers in your niche. You're making sales. Um, it's worth pushing through. AJ says Trevor is going to build the next some process or overload. Well, hopefully it's some process and not overload. Isn't Oberlo shut down now? Didn't Shopify buy Oberlo? No, oh, Oberlo is done. Oh, wait. I haven't yeah. heard that word in so long though. Yeah. I think it used to be like, what's that? No, I think one of them shut down. Shopify has already moved the app for the Overlo shut Oberlo shutdown. It was delisted from the Shopify app. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I have the same one, but Stripe told us there's two high risk of dispute, so they don't know what product I have when I'm a retailer, when I'm a retailer in contact contract with the supplier. What you're describing sounds like stuff that happens to US residents as well. If they get a like, whiff of the fact that it may not be your product. But there are uh, smart ways to explain to them what you're doing. But again, if you need to go with a different payment processor like authorized.net or something like that, I mean, that's certainly uh, certainly reasonable. We've had students that have gotten kicked off of payment processors, switched to other ones, done really well. Some people have sold their store for a lot of money and they were banned from Shopify payments. So it's not the end of the world. It sucks, but if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. And uh, I hate talking about payment processors because it's like it's hard to like give any good advice because 
we run into issues with payment processors as well. And like, like, right, for example, for our land thing, Stripe just kicked us off um, yeah. selling stuff for our land site. And I don't know why I couldn't find anywhere in this, their terms of service that what we were doing was against what, what, what they said. But yeah, when it comes to payment processor, it's just like, you know, you got to deal with what they give you, adjust and move on. I feel like there's really no good advice that we could give. It's like kind of just dealing with the bureaucracy and, you know, it could be an annoying and a bit of a headache at times, but you know, that's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. It's just, you got to just deal with it until it's resolved or move on yeah. to something else. I wish we could give the quickest path and the most, uh, reliable exact path with everything but unfortunately we can't because everyone's situation is unique and sometimes it just comes down to rolling up the sleeves and just uh exploring every avenue until you get the outcome you desire because there's always going to be hurdles to jump through some people get their you know merchant accounts on google suspended and they got to wait on that or they got to do you know find ways to get around it and it's just um it's just the nature of, of business there's, there's always going to be hurdles to jump through. And so, uh, yeah, you got to get into that, that mindset. What installment payment? Oh yes. Build assets online.com slash special offer. Go there. Huge sale on our one-on-one -on -one <laughs> drop shipping done with you program. You get access to our blogging course dropshipping course, everything. I didn't mean to pull that up, but there it is. Who asked for Which, that? Or did you uh, I think I, I think I hid his response and that's what happened. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, which installment payment service do you use on your store? Affirm, Klarna, QuadPay, Zip. Uh, we had Klarna. Now ShopPay is letting you, they're doing installment services as well. So we're going to experiment with ShopPay because they have a higher limit than uh, Klarna. Klarna was only like 10K. Shop pay is 15k and shop pay is basically just I think a firm uh like white labels through Shopify. So uh yeah, we're gonna do that and we're gonna see how that goes and we're gonna report back. AJ says overload is where all the alpha is in low ticket. LOL. What does that mean? The alpha. Is it like a statistical term? I don't know. It must be a computer science term. Yeah. Uh, Justin said he's been, he's been using Heartland for land, and then it's great. Yeah, I mean Heartland. They're a payment processor. You can use them for e-commerce as well, and so that that's certainly a good option to explore. Um, and I think as different things happen in the economy, I mean we saw this a hundred percent with COVID. Back in the day, it was never an issue to get onto Shopify payments. It was never an issue of not being able to call Google to resolve an issue if your merchant account got suspended. Now, you it, it's ridiculous. And so there's always going to be uh, different challenges that present themselves. But once you get over this hurdle once, you never have to deal with it again, most likely. So it's uh, it's worth it. Uh, AJ said, shop pay is more expensive per transaction, right? I don't compare to Klarna. I don't think so because you need to consider on Shopify when you use an external payment processor, Shopify is also tacking on like 1%. So I think shop pays like 5% for the installments. Um, so even if Klarna was like 4%, which I think they, they weren't that cheap. It's the same thing. So it's, uh, I don't know. We'll see if it's worth it or not. Do you use a different company for each shop? If it means like a different LLC, a different business entity for each store, uh, what's the answer? To you that? should. So the the most ideal the most ideal structure, once you get established, is to have an S corp with LLCs under that. So in an ideal world, that's what you should be doing. Of course, you want to consult your CPA, your tax professional for this. But after speaking with professionals, lawyers, tax professionals, that's that's the conclusion I've come to. Especially for online business, because you know it makes it easier to uh, 
to split things up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, any finance installment company, their, their fees are pretty high. So shop pay is going to be, I, I, I don't think it's that much different for any other finance company unless someone can tell me that I'm wrong. Justin said alpha is like a return on investment in finance world. Yes. Yeah. So overload is where everyone's making their money nowadays. Alicia, are you guys still running stores? Yes. We run stores ourselves. We oversee stores with our students. Um, we have some stores we partnered on. We're very much still involved in, in high ticket drop shipping. Even though I would say at this stage, Joe, we don't necessarily need it. But really, truly, I think the one thing that keeps us in the most is this. What do we need? Oh, yeah. What do we need? <laughs> yeah, I said, what do we need? There, th this. Yeah. We do need There's the no other words. way. There's no other way to get I don't even I don't even like talking about it. Yeah. Do the math. There's no other way to build a business in a couple years that does millions in revenue that is all run through credit cards. And think about what you can get out of that. Yeah, I so, went to I mean I went to Disney World pretty much for free. Yeah. Pretty sick stuff. Yeah, we were, we're going to uh, Croatia soon. I had to book the flights, book book some business class flights there and back, and uh, didn't make a dent in the rewards. Yeah. So, and that's like, I think legit twenty twenty thousand thirty thousand dollars if you purchase that cash those business flights for yeah. two people. Uh, for for virtually zero dollars so it's it is crazy and uh yeah that's again that's like for me the main selling point the reason why i feel like we need to have our own stores yeah but uh that's about it i mean should we uh keep going joe or should we wrap it up i mean i really got nothing else to say uh We'll answer this final question from Valisha. Is there any way to do business in the U.S. in a different country where it's difficult to get in touch with the suppliers? Well, we're just discussing this. I mean, contacting them shouldn't really be an issue. Yeah, you just stay up or get up early. We've had we've operated businesses, you know, overseas. We know pl plenty of people that have operated them, you know, across the the world. Thailand, etc., and so it's not it's not that you can't call suppliers, you can't contact them. You just need to have a number to contact them, which you can get through Grasshopper or, like uh, Janelle said, Zendesk Call. Be like Grasshopper, and you just stay up late, call them, and there you go, you're in. So that's about it. I think this one is, this went uh, right about an hour. We yeah. discussed the economy. We discussed uh, our expert opinions on the world. <laughs> but if there is one thing we do know, we know how to do high ticket dropshipping. <laughs> we know how to do SEO. And so if you go to buildassetsonline.com slash special offer, you too can learn how to do all these things. <laughs> Create a store that you could sell. $1,000 a month can be $30,000 on a store sale. We've had students sell stores for six figures. You need to be building a website that you can sell, especially in this economy, especially in this day and age. This is the skill set you need to learn. And so we're doing a very special sale. If you go to buildassetsonline.com slash special offer, you get one-on-one -on -one coaching with us, access to our dropshipping course, blog course, Kindle course. What else do you need? I don't know, Joe. That's all you need. That's all you need. But if you need anything else to take it easy.